Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll tell you all about the supermassive black hole discovered by scientists recently. So without further ado, let's get started. Scientists have found a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. They have named it Sagittarius A asterisk, and it has a mass more than a million times that of the sun. This is one of the most amazing finds in the history of astronomy. The most recent big event in this series was the release of the first picture of the black hole at the center of our galaxy. From that point on, scientists have learned that supermassive black holes live in the centers of many galaxies that are much farther away. After looking at everything, it looks like there is a supermassive black hole at the heart of almost every galaxy in the universe. The first picture of the huge object at the heart of our galaxy has been taken so that scientists can learn more about what black holes are like. There are strange things going on deep inside the Milky Way core. At this point in space, stars move at a speed that is a big chunk of the speed of light. This makes it look like space is empty as the stars fly around it. Scientists were hesitant to say until last year that a supermassive black hole was the only way to explain how the stars moved. But they have long thought that this was the only possible reason. For example, Reinhard Genzel and André Dez, two astronomers, split a piece of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2020. Their citation said that they were honored for the discovery of a supermassive compact object at the center of our galaxy, not for the discovery of a black hole. It was made clear that they were known for making this finding. Sagittarius A asterisk is the name for this object. But in the spring of this year, the scientists in charge of the event Horizon Telescope put an end to the debate by showing the world the first picture of a supermassive black hole in the heart of the Milky Way. This partnership had already taken a picture of a black hole before this one. In April 2019, they released the famous picture of the M87 asterisk. But it was the one they really wanted. The center of gravity around which our galaxy spins is our very own supermassive black hole, which is widely known as Sagittarius A asterisk. Black holes are almost impossible to see because they absorb everything that goes into them, even light. They bend space times so much though that when lit by streams of hot matter falling towards them and being torn apart by their gravity, they cast a shadow. The shadow is about 2.5 times bigger than the event horizon of black hole. The event horizon is the edge of space time through which nothing can ever come back. The EHT took pictures of this shadow using a method called Very Long Baseline Interferometry VLBI. VLBI connects radio observatories in different countries to make a virtual Earth-sized telescope which is the most precise telescope ever made for astronomy. A lot of nights were spent by the EHD team pointing the virtual instrument at Sagittarius A asterisk and other very large black holes. After that, the experts worked for years to look at the raw data and turn it into pictures. The long wait was partly due to the damage the COVID outbreak caused around the world. The main problem, though, was that Sagittarius A asterisk is always changing. The observatory's first target, M87 asterisk, the black hole at the heart of the galaxy, Messier 87, M87, is so huge that it takes many hours to go around it at once. For real, this means that you can look at it for a long time and nothing will change. Since Sagittarius A asterisk is more than 1,000 times less massive than the black hole, its shape changes much more quickly as matter moves in closer, faster circles around it. Katie Booman is an astronomer and computer scientist at the California Institute of Technology. She co-leads the EHD's Image Working Group and says that matter revolves around Sagittarius A asterisk so quickly that it changes minute to minute. Imagine trying to take a time-lapse picture of a bullet moving very quickly. It is hard to see Sagittarius A asterisk because it changes all the time. But it is also a great place to study black holes and Einstein's famous theory of gravity, general relativity. After decades of studying Sagittarius A asterisk with different telescopes, astronomers already have a good idea of its general size. Finally, they can watch it change over time as it feeds on streams of stuff that flares and flashes. A lot of layers of a veil cover Sagittarius A asterisk. Stars, gas, and dust make up the galaxy plane. The first layer, which blocks visible light for 27,000 light years. Radio waves can easily move across the galactic plane but they are hidden by the second layer of the veil, the scattering screen. This is a rough area of space where changes in the density of the interstellar medium send radio waves slightly off course. 
The last layer that covers Sagittarius A asterisk is the matter that falls in around the black hole. This type of light comes from the top layers of matter and is what VLBI has usually used. Making VLBI work with shorter wavelength light would let scientists see the event horizon of a black hole from closer up, but it would be very hard to do technologically. We've known for a long time that Sagittarius A asterisk is about 27,000 light years away. After years of using infrared telescopes to track the paths of stars around Sagittarius A asterisk, an exact estimate of the black hole's mass, about 4 million suns, had already been made. By entering the black hole's distance and mass into calculations based on general relativity, we can find out how big the shadow is likely to be. The image does, in fact, match the forecast. There are 52 microarcseconds between the edges of the shadow, which means that from Earth, it looks like a donut on the moon. The researchers looked at the shadows of Sagittarius A asterisk and M87 asterisk, two black holes whose masses are three orders of magnitude apart. They found that these effects are universal features of black holes. The question is, how do astronomers study supermassive black holes? Astronomers study giant black holes by drawing maps of the paths of stars and galaxies around them. They clearly see a peak in the speeds of stars moving around the center of the galaxy. This shows that the supermassive black hole has strong pulling power. In galaxies farther away, the supermassive black hole in the middle may be active. This means that the matter around it is moving so fast that it gets hot enough to give off bright electromagnetic waves spanning the whole spectrum. Once more, astronomers can figure out how heavy the black hole is by looking into how its gravity affects this emission. To put it simply, a galaxy's black hole is bigger when it comes to size. Actually, the biggest black holes that have been found so far are found in the centers of the galaxies with the most mass. These are called ultramassive black holes. There is still one big question. How big can black holes really be? The question is, how do astronomers study supermassive black holes? This makes it hard to use normal testing methods. The galaxies with the most mass, which should have the biggest black holes, are so far away from our own that we can't even figure out where their stars are in their paths. Also, their black holes don't really do anything very often. We need a new way to look into the giant black holes of faraway galaxies right away. The first EHD picture of Sagittarius A asterisk is just the start, but it shows what the object is not. A clear shade shows that Sagittarius A asterisk has an event horizon, which is what makes a black hole what it is. That means we no longer need to think about a really, really, really dense star, a wormhole, a naked singularity, or any of the other strange ideas that scientists have come up with over the years. It's not even as strange as a giant black hole. It's still weird, but it's getting closer to showing its secrets. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.